So my story involves 1988 in a way, and and the Apple II and so on, uh, but. Uh, um, a little bit more modest than, than some of the stories. Um, I actually joined Apple in 1988. And, uh, I had had an Apple II before I got there, but I, when I left Apple, and this is now, it would be about 10 years ago when this happened, um, I was running a nonprofit, um, trying to do things for, for kids to learn about science and technology and so on. And We had done some cool programs in San Carlos where kids learned to troubleshoot computers and so on. Uh, but um, we wanted to reach out to um, other communities where kids were not so well off, and we got a grant from the Kellogg Foundation. So we started working with um, Bayshore School District, uh, and we were running a summer program where we were teaching kids how to repair computers and um, get them running again and that sort of thing. Uh, in the course of the week where we were doing this, um, my colleague, uh, who was the, um, in those days they called it the computer teacher, his name was Don Peck, um, my colleague, who was the teacher from the school that I was working with, and I um, were scrounging around, uh, actually in the basement of the school, looking for some cables or whatever, and we found a stack of Apple IIs. Now, these Apple IIs obviously hadn't been powered on for, you know, five years, maybe longer. I don't remember the exact time when they would have been retired, but um, they were pretty old computers. Uh, but uh, there they were, and... Um, they hadn't been thrown away, so we suspected that probably it wasn't that they were retired because they didn't work. They were retired because technology had moved on. But I, So I asked uh, Don, I said, the kids that are in this group, um, how many of them do you think you know, have computers at home? How many of them do you think have Internet access at home? And part of what we were doing was actually helping the school get on the Internet because in those days you didn't usually have Internet. And we helped them get E-rate funding. And, so on. Uh, actually, the article that came out of it was called, Are We on the Internet Yet, Mr. Peck? Um, but um, turned out that pretty much every student in the group was eligible for free and reduced lunch. None of them was a native speaker of English. There were 11 different languages spoken in the room, and none of those were English. Um, and we thought, well, I wonder if we could actually have these kids get these computers working again and let them have them. And, of course, you have to jump through hoops with school districts to give away the junk from the basement. But we jumped through the hoops, and we got permission. And there were, uh, it seemed like there were enough computers to go around. But as, and the kids were very, very excited when they saw this opportunity. And they didn't at first know that they were going to be given the computers. But as we went along, we really, and they actually were getting them working. And most of them actually kind of just worked right away. We started adding, you know, software to do word processing and tracking down dot matrix printers so they actually could, you know, write their homework at home and so on with the computer. But in the course of doing it, gradually realized that in order to get as many working as possible, we would have to cannibalize a few of the computers. So, in other words, take, take good parts from one in order to get another one working. And as a result of that, we would end up with um, not quite enough computers for every student in the class to get one at the end. Well, as instructors, we were just devastated. I mean, we were crushed. What do you do now? You know, and we 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 didn't tell the kids for a day or so. You know that we'd figured this out. We struggled. We had meetings, and finally, we said, "There's nothing to do but to tell the kids." You know, we just have to. You know, you know, honesty is the best policy, basically. So we sat down with the kids and we told them the problem. To our amazement, they were not faced by this a bit, and they actually said, what we're going to do, these are kids, these are like fourth and fifth graders, what we're going to do is we're going to ask each of our friends, who's got a computer at home? If you have one at home, how good is it? How old is it? Are your, your parents let you use it? We're going to figure out who needs the computers the most, and we're going to decide who gets them. <laughs> And so those kids actually figured it out, and the ones who knew at that point that they were not going to get them were more enthusiastic about helping their partner finish their computer than the ones who were getting them. And so it started out, you know, all about the straight ahead, the Silicon Valley, the technology, and the science, and it ended up being about social justice.